What's up everybody, Just Watch Movies again. Thank you guys for stopping by my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about one of my all time favorite comedies as part of my series where I talk about my favorite comedies on the last Sunday of the month. Yes, it's very similar to Chris Stuckman's series last year, but I thought that was a lot of fun. So my last video I did was super bad with the great, awesome Zach Pope. And today we're gonna to be talking about one of the first sex comedies that I have ever seen and uh, introduced me to that genre, and that is Eurotrip. I have the special guest of LC Screen Talk on my channel to talk about Eurotrip as well. He's one of the few YouTubers that I have actually met in real life. He's a great guy, a lot of fun to be around, and I love his channel. He's so, he loves talking about film as much as I do, so it's an easy choice to have him come on my channel. So, before I give you my thoughts and memories of Eurotrip, LC Screen Talks is going to share his thoughts and his memories on this film as well. So, LC Screen Talk, take it away. This isn't where I parked my car. First of all, I just want to give a big thank you to Justin for inviting me on and allowing me to be a part of your new series and having me on to talk about one of my favorite guilty pleasure films of all time, and that's Eurotrip. First of all, just like look at how old this DVD copy of Eurotrip is that I own. I have loved this film ever since it came out. It's like a staple of my tween years. I don't even know if that's like really appropriate to say <laughs> with how raunchy this movie is. But raunchy sex comedies were all the rage. They were popping up like wildfire in the late 90s and early 2000s. And in complete honesty, Eurotrip is probably my number two, only behind the first American Pie. I love this film. <laughs> So for the review, I just want to kick us off with the positives and go over some of just the key moments of the movie that are pretty much a laugh out loud funny and still hold up even in 2019 and really kind of are the tent poles of the film for me that make it still so enjoyable, so funny, and such a good time. So personally, I have always loved the hash brownies moment when two of our main characters go into this Dutch bakery in Amsterdam, order brownies, and then continue to like trip out. They like freak out, vision blurred, start eating people's food, leftovers, jump up on tables and start stripping, talking about gay porn. <laughs> I mean, it's outrageous. But what makes the scene that much better and really like caps off just how great it is, is the worker there that's like not having it. It's like, yo, those aren't hash brownies, they're just regular brownies. <laughs> <laughs> that twist on it made it that much better, and I, I've always just loved that moment. And then, while that's going on, another moment I loved is happening, and that is the Wanderlust scene. We get this great cameo from Lucy Lawless, who is just giving it in this movie. As she always does. I mean, come on. But it's such a funny play on, like, wild European sex, and it works so well. From the password to the bait and switch, it's just a really funny scene that subverts your expectations. And I think that's what this film does really well in terms of, like, sex-related material and sexy, raunchy comedy, is it gives you those moments, but... Often, it will subvert your expectation on what it is you're about to see and this like crazy party atmosphere you're about to get. It then takes it in a new direction. Of course, the nude beach is another moment that that happens. Where you get like a legit, oh, this is what nude beaches uh, pretty much are all about. And of course, it just turns into this like crazy sequence uh, chasing down the only girl. It's a lot of fun. It's really funny. The robot fight is really over the top, but another great moment. But of course, we have to talk about it. Scotty doesn't know, both as a song and a sequence in the film. Amazing. Really kind of the highlight of the whole movie. First of all, the song in and of itself is just hilarious. It's highly inappropriate. A really terrible person singing, clearly, but so funny, so catchy. And then I love how it is just this kind of basis for the film, not only to Scotty's character at the start of the film and like kind of what 
what he represents in some ways, but also the fact that we get it in other languages as we're traveling the world, people have it as a ringtone, it just constantly finds its way back to the forefront, and I'm never mad at it. Plus, it's just a bop. It will always be fire. How did this not win the Academy Award for Best Original Song? I guess we'll never know. But seriously, it's a great song. <laughs> This, like, catchy, well-written, really fun, tongue-in-cheek song, I think really is a reason this film continues to endure and be so funny, even on a 2019 watch. Plus, our characters are all likable. In one way or another, we don't have these characters that are just so grating that you can't stand to be around them, like most of these teen comedies have. Maybe some of the side characters, but none of our main group, certainly. The use of music in here is really great, from singing with the Manchester United fan club to the, like, stereotypical Roman or Paris kind of songs with those montages. It's, it's a lot of fun, and I think it's a pretty well done, raunchy, ridiculous comedy. Now, of course, viewing this again for the sake of this review, it's the first time I've actually watched Eurotrip in a couple of years. I've seen it probably a hundred times at this point in my life, because I used to watch it a lot. But I haven't watched it maybe in a couple years, and watching it now through that 2019 lens, there's some problematic material, certainly. There are definitely homophobic undertones, uh, like there were in most of these type of comedies, just so scared of male intimacy. However, it never falls into like a mean-spirited atmosphere. There's a coming out scene in the film where you genuinely believe it's like, hey, no, it's cool. Of course, we have the use of like the R word in here. We have some more offensive envelope pushing material, certainly. But again, I don't think it's really mean-spirited, and I think that's what keeps it from being super cringeworthy. There are definite moments where I was like, eh. watching this today is a little bit awkward, but, but it's light enough that I think you still have a good time. There's also a lot of nudity. <laughs> Women are definitely an object in a lot of this film. But like I said, it is a sex raunchy comedy. So it delivers on what you wanted to see and then it's going to give you an eyeful on a bunch of stuff maybe you didn't want to see. So I like that it, it subverted those expectations while still delivering the goods. But the heart is always in the right place. It'll keep you laughing throughout. So obviously I love it. And clearly by my review, I think it's a pretty hilarious, fun, good time. In taking a trip down the nostalgia train, I remember watching this movie again about a hundred million times growing up. It's a shock that I'm not just like this little degenerate running around now. <laughs> but it was those moments of just ridiculousness that I found so funny and kept me gravitating toward it when I hated other road trip movies and high school comedies of the time I found so stupid and not funny at all. Eurotrip was one that I could relate to people on that I actually did find fun and funny. Plus, not gonna lie, I always have had a little bit of a crush on Scotty and still do. So maybe I was like, okay, can we spend more time with you being nude at the nude beach, Scotty? Thank you again, Justin, for having me on, inviting me, welcoming me onto your channel to talk about one of my favorite comedies of the 2000s. I had a blast with this, like, retro comedy review. I had a blast talking about Eurotrip, and I hope to find other people who share my same weird love of this guilty pleasure raunchy classic. <laughs> If you want to find me, you can find me here on YouTube where I do movie reviews as well as other film related content, Twitter and Instagram, all at LC Screen Talk. Now, I'll send it on back to Justin. Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. Oh, <laughs> I love that running. <laughs> Thank you for joining my channel once again to talk about Eurotrip. For me, Eurotrip, I think is probably the first sex comedy that I saw. In the mid-2000s, late 90s, it was so many sex comedies everywhere. We had Road Trip, American Pie, Euro Trip, and the sequels to American Pie. 
so many different things that were going on and your trip was the first one out of all of them that I had watched. I even still have the DVD right here that I bought in like 2004 when it was released. This is, I think, one from Blockbuster. Yeah, you know, Blockbuster used to have like those deals for previously viewed movies. I got this in Anchorman. My mom did not approve, but um, I did and I loved it. I used to watch Euro Trip so many times. It is ridiculous how many times I've watched this film. And I was like in seventh grade, eighth grade, and so I did not understand everything about this movie. So many sex jokes that I did not understand, but I still wanted to watch it. And there are some things that, you know, I found to be really funny. Some things I was like, I don't even know what that is, but that's pretty funny. And I would watch this movie all the time, like 1 a.m., 2 a.m., every like Friday, Saturday night. Euro Trip was on repeat. Uh, if you want to watch this movie for a young boy, you can understand why I probably watched Euro Trip so much. But Euro Trip, besides all of this sex jokes and raunchy moments, for a teenager to watch, this movie does a great job of building the chemistry amongst these friends. You have Scotty, who just broke up with his girlfriend Fiona, and he tries to go meet a pen pal named Mika, and he brings along his friend Cooper, and they also meet two other friends in Europe. So they go on this crazy adventure through Europe trying to find this girl. And I like the dynamics of this friend group. You can tell that they are comfortable being on screen with each other. It's a lot of fun. Whenever I watched Euro Trip, I always wanted friends like this, friends that stuck by you and just had a blast. And I always wanted to backpack through Europe whenever I watched this film. I still have not, but that'd be a lot of fun. I'm sure it would not be anything like this movie. This movie starts off with Scotty and he just graduated from high school. And so he's so excited to spend the summer with Fiona. She dumps him and she goes to a party. He goes to a party and finds out that she's been dating Matt Damon for a year. And uh, he sings the famous Scotty Doesn't Know song. I actually bought the soundtrack for this movie. One of the few, found, one of the few soundtracks I ever bought and I played this song on repeat. And it took me, I would say, probably a decade to realize that was Matt Damon. And I really did not know who Matt Damon was when I was younger. And uh, I, when the, when the time I found out it was Matt Damon, my mind was blown. And I also did not know Fred Armisen was in this movie. And that's crazy for me because that scene when they're all on the train and he's slowly taking his clothes off when they go through the tunnel and he says, Miss Scusi, Miss Scusi. Compartment. G -G. What, what the hell are you doing? Oh, me scusi, me scusi. Oh, no, 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 uh -oh. Big tunnel. Who's touching me? Scusi! That's one of the iconic scenes of the movie, and I thought it's so funny, and I really didn't realize it was Fred Armisen. This movie is just filled with jam-packed jokes and raunchy moments for when they get to Manchester and they go into the pub. I'm not much of a singer. Ah! Sing! My baby takes the morning train. He works from nine to five, and then he takes another home again to find me watching the Manchester United football team. They have to sing the Manchester United fan club song and they sing a, a song that's not anything remotely to that and they get drunk and it's a lot of fun. So many times in this movie you expect one thing to happen and they really change it up and it's not what you expected. It's for the good and it's really hilarious, especially towards the end when the twins drink and they start making out. You don't expect something like that to happen in this movie, but it did and it's really funny. I also like the little transitions from when they go from one country to another. They sing songs appropriate to the country that they are going to. And it's like a little map on like a table and they're just going along. I think it's pretty interesting, pretty creative. And I liked hearing different songs from that country. And I had that soundtrack, so I know every single song and it was a blast. Now, I was thinking of not watching Euro Trip before this review because I was afraid that I would watch it and it would change my opinion about the movie because I have like this, this opinion about this movie from when I was like in seventh and eighth grade and I didn't want to change that. But I did watch it and it's still a lot of fun. 
Scotty fighting the robot in front of the Louvre is one of the funniest things in this movie. I still manage to love this movie. I still manage to have a lot of fun with it. It did bring back so many memories. I used to just watch this movie constantly and I sat down and I watched it and I go, yep, I remember everything about this movie. It's definitely a movie that I shouldn't have watched when I was a teenager, but I did anyways and I had so much fun with it. It's just one of those movies that it's a guilty pleasure. Not a lot of people like it, but for me, it brings back fond memories of watching Euro Trip around midnight every single weekend. I'm gonna go ahead and give Euro Trip an A+. It's one of my favorite comedies of all time. Of course it gets an A+. Thank you LC Screen Talk for joining my channel as part of my new comedy series. Every last Sunday of the month, I'll be reviewing one of my favorite comedies. Follow me on Twitter. There you can find out how you can be on one of the upcoming videos and figure out what it might be as well. You can find all the links down below for my social media, so go over there and give them some likes. You guys can also check out my video that I did with Zach Pope right over here where we reviewed Superbad, and also check out all the 2019 movies I've done so far. My name is Justin Watches Movies, and you guys stay classy, YouTube.